Good day. Welcome to Battle Ready. Let's pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Virgin Mother of God, Mary Immaculate, we dedicate and consecrate ourselves to you under the title of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. May this medal be for each one of us a sure sign of your affection for us and a constant reminder of our duties toward you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So today I have a very special guest back. Christine Watkins is here. She has written yet another book. How many books have you written? I was counting the other day. It might be nine. Okay, that's a lot. I don't know who writes more books, you or Father Calloway, but it seems you have a new one every year. But this is a really very interesting book. This book compiled all the different miracles under the medal in one place. This book is fantastic. So thank you for writing the book. This is a question I get posed all the time. Why don't we see miracles like when Jesus walked the earth? And now I can say, well, guess what? There's plenty of them, and they're all in this book. Go get the book, and you can see that our Lord is still doing miracles, but they're often attributed to his mother. Exactly. They are happening, and they've been happening for almost 2,000 years. And thank you so much for your endorsement of the book. I think that's what you said, that they've been happening for almost 200 years. And there are miracles of healings, miracles of deliverance, miracles of physical protection, conversions that shouldn't have happened, absolutely outrageous conversions. And the medal is part of these, and it is doing what Mary said to St. Catherine Labore that it would do. She said, have a medal struck after this model, which did happen, and the church approved of it. All who wear it will receive great graces. It should be worn around the neck. Great graces will be given to those who wear it with confidence. And it seems that she's given even more grace through her prayers than that statement, because you can have it in your glove compartment, in your pocket. You can put it on your child who doesn't know what it is. And still, these graces that are extraordinary flow, and they are as big as the graces in the Gospels themselves. Yeah, it is it is fascinating. There's a lot of examples in the book, so I'm imagining that this took a lot of research. Yes, I researched the miraculous in terms of how the saints used it. St. Teresa of Calcutta used it every day. She would hand them out, and she got one in the center of the Kremlin when Pope John Paul II consecrated the world to the Blessed Virgin Mary. She wanted Russia included, so she had her own covert operation. And St. Maximilian Kolbe, he was incredible in his use of the medal and fully believed in it. And Frank Duff, the founder of the Legion of Mary, used it. And then these everyday people have miraculous occurrences, like their child not dying, who should have been completely crushed in a car. The car is completely crushed. There's no room for the body to be. But because the metal was hanging from the rearview mirror, the person walks away unscathed or a plane falls from the sky. The metal is grabbed at the last minute. There's nothing but complete disaster of metal parts everywhere in bits and the pilot has a broken thumb. Let's go back to Mother Teresa, because I was with the pastor of our newest parish in our diocese, which is Mother Teresa of Calcutta. So in your book, you talk about, I think she gave out 40,000 of these medals? At least, at least. Herself, just just herself, not her nuns. But then she wanted a patron for leprosy. Now this, I've never heard this story until, and what did she do? This is fascinating, how close a relationship she had with the Pope. So she told him that, Her sisters needed a saint who took care of lepers, and she needed a saint now. So (laughs) she made sure that St. Damien was going to get his sainthood. And the Pope said, well, we need three miracles, and that hasn't happened yet. So sorry, I can't go around the church's designation of how a saint is formed by the church. And she said, well, that's a problem. (laughs) And so she started pushing things around, as she often did, to get her way, which often was God's way and the Blessed Mother's way, thank goodness. And so she said, well, we don't need three miracles this time. That can be changed. And so the Pope designated that a certain cardinal would help her out, and he took her to 
this library and she said, where is the book where you're studying his life? And the priest said, well, there's a book up there in the top shelf. And that's where and he started to say all this research he'd done and 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 started to give himself humbly accolades for the work he was doing, trying to further the cause. And she ignored him. She said, no, just get get me the book, the book way up there on the shelf. So he she has him climb up a ladder. He pulls out this tome. And she takes a miraculous metal and she smacks it inside the cover. She puts a tape on and he was going to go on about what the procedure was. She goes, no, we're good here. (laughs) She shoved it in the book and walked out. (laughs) And sure enough, exactly what she wanted happened. There weren't the three required miracles. There were less. And she got her leper saint. Amazing. A persistent woman. And, but she always got her way. She always got her just, way. It was God's way. Yes. Little shove. <laughs> little kick, a little push, a little metal. So the metal is no small um, mover and shaker. Yeah, and that word now was uh, important when she was ministering to the sick. She would place the metal in on the part of their body that was in pain, and she would say something to the effect of, I need you to be my mother now and that's when normally the pain would start to rescind and go away and this would happen over and over and over again it's just incredible i mean we should all start doing this we need to be going out and doing this when we go on our sick calls to the hospital is just doing that see what happens maybe we'll get a lot more miracles yeah father john harden was completely transformed in his spirituality because of one of these miraculous metal miracles. He was in the hospital, and he had many rounds to make, and there was a boy who was on a ventilator, a young boy, and he was dying. He needed life support, and he remembered that a Vincentian priest had come and given a talk on the miraculous metal, and he he poo-pooed it, but he took the flyer, And he remembered in this desperate case that he had that flyer with him. He had never used or tried the miraculous metal, but he thought, well, if ever there was a time to use it, it would be for this boy. So he was going to say an investiture prayer, which is not needed for the metal. Every metal needs to be blessed, but there is a special prayer that a priest can say. So he really still thought the whole thing was ridiculous, but he got a nun to get a blue ribbon and put it around the boy's neck. And sure enough, the boy completely recovered his brain, his heart, his functioning. And um, it, he said it completely transformed him, realizing what the metal was and what God could still do. So, you know, this time of year, we priests get so much mail because a lot of Christmas cards are coming in. But today, of all days, I opened the mail for the day, and one of the little cards had this little item in it. Can you see it? Yes. This came for me today in the mail. I mean, I have one on, and I also no kidding. Also carry one in my pocket, but this came today, and I think she knows we were going to talk about this today. Wow, what do you know? Well, so, go yeah. ahead. I just think that. People don't necessarily know what the metal is and what it can do. They're probably like I was before writing the book where they know of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know that there's such thing as a miraculous metal. But what I was thinking as I was writing the book is, Mary, are you wanting a complete revival? Are you wanting this to be known like it was in the 1800s, because people who knew about it, believed in it, and used it were bringing the gospel miracles to life in their lives and in the (laughs) lives of those they gave it to. In these times, which is so critical for faith, for orthodoxy, for health, for so many things that we're battling, we need this. this Is this your desire, Mary? And then so the book came out recently, and we're also... We're giving away many, many medals through queenofpeacemedia.com. All you do is you pay for the cord or you 
get it with a flyer. I'm, I can be introverted when it comes to evangelization. And sometimes I don't want to repeat the Catherine of Cien, Catherine of Labore story and what the miraculous medal is and what it does. So I made a flyer that you can hand with the medal to somebody. And then you've given this great gift that they might not throw in the garbage thinking it's a trinket. So mm-hmm. we're, this has just exploded exploded i needed to get tons of volunteers we have people packaging these things and sending them out and the books are are going out all over the world very quickly and so i guess that was mary's answer yes i i do want this to be revived in our day and time so it's it's happening before my eyes and um it's quite extraordinary i think people are hungry for this medal and hungry to give it away and have it on their family. Mm -hmm. They don't need it. (laughs) It's, you know, I'll tell you, it's also a great weapon of protection from Satan and his uh, gang of thieves. Because when I particularly go to a home that has a problem with an infestation and the house seems possessed, um, Mm -hmm. I do the deliverance, the normal course of action, but then I place a miraculous medal in each of the rooms, the bedrooms of the house. Mm. And always the people say that was the last time we ever had a problem. So I think she she's doing a lot of what we know is far clips by the things we don't know that she's doing. Right, exactly. And so what I tell people is you don't know how many times you've been saved from injury or death or an attack by the evil one. And Mm. people assume, hey, what what really could this be doing? Yeah, I know it did it for other people. But think about it. If the demons do not see this, they do not see a little metal oval object. They see Mary. If the metal is blessed, they actually see her and they think, well, maybe later (laughs) or or not right now. Maybe never. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe never. I have a friend who's a deacon in San Francisco, and he works in deliverance ministry. And you may know him, Deacon Christoph Sandoval. I don't know, but he studied under Father Gabriel Amor in the Ministry of Exorcism. And his story is in the book as well. And he went to see Our Lady of Guadalupe, was attacked by a demon when he was lying in his room there, and wondered, what's that? And thought, well, something's about to happen. So he and his mom and his friend rushed to the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe, received communion, saw Our Lady. It was very emotional. He's originally born in Mexico and came to this country as a young boy. And he was in the cab going back to the hotel when he felt a force move him out of the cab, wanting him to walk. It's a benevolent force. So he followed it. He got out of the cab and he finds himself in this market walking down this hallway. And at the very end, with all these shops with jewelry counters and such, he comes to the end of a hallway. He sees a clock up top on the wall. To the right is a woman in a red dress, a heavy set woman. And there's a jewelry counter with three young girls about age seven in white dresses standing next to each other with three miraculous medals about two inches high, nothing else on the counter. And they see him and they say, we've been waiting for you. These other two are for your friends and this one, the middle one, is for you. And he goes into his pocket to give money and They say, no, 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 it's free. He takes it. He goes up and upstairs, and there's another mass taking place at the Metropolitan Cathedral. And there's a sprinkling rite they always do, and he holds up the medal. And the minute the holy water hits the medal, his eyes are open to realize that what just happened was not normal. (laughs) So he thinks, what? What's going on? So he runs back down through the market, goes to the end of the hall, looks up. The clock is there. The woman in the red dress is there, and there's no counter, and there's no three little girls. And he says, well, where is the counter and the girls? And she says, we we never have anything there. That space is always open, and I remember you. Oh, amazing. 
So his life went on to do as you're doing. He didn't, he wasn't involved in exorcism ministry at all at that point, but now he works with the Archdiocese of San Francisco, helping the exorcists. And he always does the investiture of the medals, first of all, which he says is like the picador that gets the bull weekend before Christ comes in for the kill, as it were. So he says that that was something that she planned way back then for his future, and he hands out thousands as well. Was he a priest at that point? No, he's a deacon and still a deacon. So he doesn't he doesn't have the ministry of exorcism, but he assists. Okay, uh, that's something else. So, of all the odd stories you you had to read through, what was one that really stood out? Not that that wasn't odd, but that I mean. They're all odd in that they're glorious. You know, some some are more normal and kind of funny, like a friend of mine who ended up getting out of a very severe speeding ticket by giving the policeman a miraculous medal. And instead of giving them a whopper of a ticket for going 90 on the freeway, the policeman actually escorted them to the airport to get them there on time. Wow. (laughs) I'm not saying not saying that you should, you know, metal. <laughs> right. But there's stories like that, anywhere from that to a man going to Kenya who's a Protestant who says to his friend, Hey, give me one of those round, funny looking things that you wear. You never know what happens when you're in Africa for months. So he's in Mombasa, Kenya. Mm-hmm. He's wearing the metal, not exactly sure what it is. And he doesn't have his rifle anymore, but he has shot at a bull and there are African natives around him and he shoots at it and he wounds it, but doesn't kill it, which is a big mistake Mm -hmm. because the Africans there know that if you wound it, it'll charge at you and it doesn't spare its victims. You have to go for the kill. Mm -hmm. And so the bull starts charging at him full force and he thinks last moments of my life and he remembers this metal and he holds it up and the bull this close to him so close that he can feel the bull's breath stops mm. looks at the metal and just trots away <laughs> So that's that's a fantastic it really is miraculous. I mean it's miraculous. Another story that's yeah. quite beautiful in Italy, a boy goes outside, he falls in a pond, he doesn't know how to swim, the mother's frantic, she runs out realizing something could have happened to him. She sees a vagabond, a homeless man, holding her little four year old boy in his arms, saved him from drowning. She says, come inside. I want you to have this. The boy had a medal around his neck. She takes it off his neck. She puts it on his and says, I want you to say one Hail Mary every day for the rest of your life. For some reason, the homeless man does. He he gets worse and worse. He starts to hate humanity, hate himself, hate life. He ends up in another country. <laughs> He's cursing. He's in the hospital. He's going to die. They say, do you want a priest? He says, absolutely not. But a priest walks in and he curses at him. But they talk long enough for the homeless man to understand that this man, this priest, is from his same hometown in Italy, which sparks a conversation. So he sits down and the man's like, there's no hope for me. There's no hope for me. I I dare you to tell me or prove to me that there's any hope for me at all. So he think, and he turns his back on the priest and he assumes that the priest is going to leave the room. But he doesn't. The priest stays and sits down and the priest sees that on the back of the homeless man's neck is a cord. And he says, what is that? So he the man turns around and says, well, years ago. I helped this boy. I saved him from drowning. And his mother gave this to me. And the priest got very silent and tears formed in his eyes. And he said, that little little boy was me. And you saved me that day. And now I'm here to save you. Can't make it up. 
You can't make it. <laughs> so amazing. All right, just one final question. Have you heard about the imposter medals? I have. I have heard about them. And there, there are two, two thoughts around that. Mm-hmm. One is that it's a real thing. One is that Freemasons have slightly changed them. I haven't personally seen one. I don't know if you have with something I different. Have. You have. Okay. Yeah. okay. So you know more than I. What's different about them? So I would just say to, you know, the audience, those listening, when you do purchase the medal, go to a reputable Catholic bookshop or gift shop. So encourage everybody to go out and get one. Get the book. The book will blow your mind. Well, thank you. Final and thoughts? if you want those, those medals in bulk and you want to make sure they're the right ones, we, we do have them in bulk and we have them with the flyer, the evangelization packets at um, www.queenofpeacemedia.com and the book is The Miraculous Metal Pendant of Power. The book is amazing. The book is oh. amazing because it's just one amazing story after the next. I mean, there's also a history, but like, and you can click on any, well, I had the digital version, but if you get the book, it has an index. It tells you, you know, Mother Teresa's miracles go here. So you can just seek out the part you want to read for that night. You know, it's a couple of pages before you go to bed. It's a wonderful way to end the day. Thinking about the miracles God's doing around the world and even in towns near us. I mean, I think if we start promoting the medal, you know, and really being an agent of Our Lady in giving these out and blessing people with them and praying with people who are having a bad day, we're going to see a lot more of the miracles and you'll have to write book two. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. At your command. Well, listen, it's been such a pleasure to speak with you and catch up. Um, let me give you my blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Father Dan signing out.